almost as fun as a chance to see the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams, on Sunday Night Football, a six-point dog to the Houston Texans, who were spectacular with their new additions. Uh, Joe Mixon goes off, as well as uh, two touchdowns for Stefan Diggs, Greg. Is is there a world in which Caleb and the Bears defense can overcome this monster of the Houston Texans? Absolutely, there's a world. I'm not living in that world. Like, you know, I I it's a six point spread that feels about right to me. Like, I feel comfortable the Texans win this game. I I would it I would I would feel good about that. And yet, uh, this is a perfect Sunday night game. I got to give a shout out to is it Mike North in the scheduling department? Yes, they came out with the primetime games in Week One, and they say like fire show it's like a concert that starts with all your biggest songs okay now we're sliding into week two i'm not gonna say they're like deep album cuts but very nice thursday night matchup with miami buffalo and then this to me is a perfect week two sunday night let's get caleb williams in early he has some answers uh some questions to answer you have cj stroud our, our next big star the number two pick last year it's absolutely perfect and yet i think the biggest single mismatch in this entire game at least if week one wasn't a liar, is the Houston Texans running game. They, they went from worst to first. Worst in the league, DVOA last year, uh, to best in the league in week one. And that is the way you always want to attack a Matt Eberflus defense. They are built to stop the pass. They are fantastic uh, stopping the pass. And their pass rush was good last week too. But they weren't as good against the run. They're traditionally not as good against the run. So is this Joe Mixon Run, rushing attack a lot of times into light boxes because you have all these great receivers. Is that for real? Because if it is, this is going to be a top three offense in the NFL. So Houston goes out and gets Joe Mixon because he's familiar with the zone run scheme. Damian, Damian Pierce was not. That was something that there he's gotten better, right? But Mixon comes in and you see it operate functionally. And what Bobby Sloak likes to do offensively, that's going to set up so much more. And we know the Texans, they've got receivers for days. They've got tight ends for days. And they've got a strong offensive line. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at Let's go back to Caleb Williams, who, by the way, still is not on quarterback Island, Greg. Um, oh, that was a good call by you guys. At least after one week. Relax. I was trying to put him on to the island. If you missed it, we will be bringing back quarterback Island. It is a special place where only 10 quarterbacks, 12, 12 quarterbacks can live. And I thought, Caleb, you should just start him there he, since he's going to be there his whole career. Uh, but maybe I was wrong about that. Well, we'll revisit in a couple weeks yes. on, on a Tuesday. But but his comp, his comp was C.J. Stroud. I mean, and the Bears, Ryan Ryan Pace. I'm sorry, Ryan Poles. No, not Ryan Pace. Ryan Poles, the general <laughs> manager. Uh, you know, at, at the Hall of Fame game, he, he told me and Brian Baldinger, we're not running from that comp. We think the fact that C.J. Stroud came out and lit it up like that as a rookie is something that Caleb Williams can do. They've put him in position to do it. Now he said Caleb has to run his own race, but they think he's talented enough to do the great things that C.J. Stroud did. Don't think a competitor like C.J. Stroud has not heard that also. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, let's spice it up. And C.J., to be fair, his first couple games were not he got, crazy he got, he got statistically. Like 24 times. Now, he didn't have like a 93-yard game, but he did have one game where he really struggled. That was about it. But right. even But they were more conservative early. I don't think it was about being conservative with the Bears last week. They just... You know, he missed a, it was a combination of things. He made more good plays in that game than I expected when I went to rewatch it. But he struggled when he was under pressure um, and he didn't create kind of like you expect. There's like one or two plays. But when he tried to go into create mode, it didn't work. Yeah. And we saw the preseason magic, of course, the, the spin throw to Romo Dunze. We saw that a million times out of the preseason. But <laughs> like it wasn't just when there was no pressure, when the time to throw was over two and a half seconds, he was three of 13 mm. through the air. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some of those, the, there's the Keenan Allen drop, right? There's the one he missed Keenan Allen and you can pick and choose there, but where Caleb succeeded was he didn't on the other side, like Will Levis is a whirling dervish <laughs> throwing the ball to the other team and fumbles and, and all this other stuff. But Caleb had that nice third and 10 run that set up a Cairo Santos field goal mm-hmm. that they cut into that lead to give that defensive play a chance, uh, to tie the ball game up. And, and ultimately like, no turnovers. Um, he Great took point. care of the ball. Great no, he's he's not, you know, C.J. Stroud in that early game last year against Anthony Richardson where he throws for 380-something yards and it's like world beating. Maybe this week, but Sunday Night Football, he's a big-time player. Got a chance. Why not? Why not? I love That would be fun. I, that said, I almost took this as my survivor uh, pick, uh, Texans over the Bears. Thought about it. 